How you can teach your runners to be safe more often by knowing the runner's lane interference rule. When your runners should not run in the lane. Coming up next. When the World Series runner lane interference call was made, a lot of baseball fans showed their utter ignorance by whining and crying, thinking it was a bad call. A few of us, like people who watch this channel, saw that play and asked, what's the discussion about? This is not a difficult call. Stay watching through this entire video if you want to not look foolish when this happens during one of your youth baseball games. Also, stay with us for bonus resources for the smart baseball coach and player. The runner's lane is there to protect the runner. That is its purpose. It's not there to protect the fielder. If you can keep that idea in mind, it will help out a lot. We'll start with two extremely similar plays, but with two different outcomes. This, of course, is the famous World Series clip. The runner is out, clearly. We'll explain why a little later. Why is this runner safe? Understanding the rule can help your runners be called safe more often. The rule book reads a little bit lawyerly, so I'll paraphrase. The runner in lane, that three foot wide area seen here, protects the runner from any interference of the fielder attempting to receive a thrown ball. As long as the runner is in this area the whole way to first, with the exception that he can step into fair territory on the last step or two in order to get to the bag, which is entirely in fair territory, then no matter what happens with the throw to get him out, he is never interfering. This only applies to when a fielder at first base is receiving a throw. Any other situation and this runner's lane is irrelevant. Let me repeat, any other situation and this runner's lane is irrelevant. Let's relook at these two plays. The first is the Major League Baseball play. The runner does not ever enter the runner's lane, and therefore, this runner is not protected if he interferes with the ball being received by the fielder at first base. Since the throw was one the fielder could catch with reasonable effort, but he doesn't on account of the runner, the runner is out, and all runners must return to where they were at the time of the pitch, and time is called. The second play, the runner does run in the runner's lane, and also does interfere with the fielder's ability to receive the throw. But he is not called out because the runner's lane protected him, even though he veered over on the last couple of steps to reach the bag. Back to the Major League Baseball examples. The managers of both these plays get ejected, and their whole argument is based on the fact that the interference occurred at the last moment. They think if you are within a step, that interference shouldn't be called, but they are incorrect. Did the runner interfere with the fielder's ability to receive the throw? Did he run in the runner's lane? That's all. And the first base umpire does not make the interference call. So even though he may know it should be called, he's going to always call safe if the runner reaches the base before the ball is caught and secured. This is always the home plate umpire's call. So spectators typically think the call was safe and then overturned. One other misconception with the rule is that the runner is outside the lane, he should always be called out no matter what. That is not the case. And even more common is the belief that if the runner interferes with the throw, he should be called out. So if the catcher makes a bad throw to avoid hitting the runner, then the runner is out. That is also incorrect. The throw must be a good enough throw to be reasonably caught by the fielder at first base. Okay, so here is how your runners can be safe more often. In this clip, with no runners on base, the batter lays down a bunt that obviously, right away, should be an out. Since he's only going to be safe on an error anyway, if he runs here, then he may cause the pitcher to throw wild, in which case he is safe. The risk is being hit in the back by the throw and being called out still. But if no other runners are on base or there are two outs and you're out on a routine play, then run in a way that can cause a possible bad throw. If the pitcher's throw bounces before reaching the fielder on first, then it's not interference if the first baseman misses it, even if the runner got in the way. The throw is not one considered to be reasonably caught. Same if the pitcher threw the ball into right field. It's only interference if the runner interferes with the fielder at first base receiving the throw that can be reasonably caught. However, with runners on base that may advance or even score with less than two outs, you better run correctly. Doing it wrong like this guy, and you get called out, and the run doesn't score. 
everyone goes back to their original basis at the time of the pitch. So knowing the rules can help your players be safe more often. All of this, of course, relies on an umpire knowing the rules, which isn't always the case in youth baseball. But baseball is an imperfect game, and if your umpire gets it wrong and a respectful discussion can't resolve it, then move on. No need to act like a fool. Nah, that was an out. Good hustle. Hey, hey, run up. I've never seen a coach do that before. Yeah. Big are you standing on the base? Check out Close Call Sports if you really want to understand baseball rules. Also, for Little League, check out LLUmpire.com's list of baseball rule myths. And another great site is StumpTheUmp.com.